Hey guys, welcome to Budget EDH. On this week's episode, we bring you a pirate tribal deck featuring Malcolm, Keen-Eyed Navigator, and Breach's Brazen Plunderer from Commander Legends. Malcolm is two and a blue for a legendary creature with flying. Whenever one or more pirates you control deal combat damage to an opponent, you create a treasure token for each opponent dealt damage. And then Breach's is a pirate with menace. Whenever one or more pirates you control deal damage to your opponents, exile the top card of each of those opponents' libraries. You may play those cards this turn, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. So this deck, as you may have guessed, is a pirate tribal deck. There's a ton of pirates in here, over 20 of them, and most of them are evasive, so they have flying or they're unblockable. We do want our pirates to deal that damage so that we can make treasure tokens and also steal cards off the top of our opponent's library, which is a very powerful ability. And then we do have a lot of interaction in this deck. There's a couple things that this deck is very weak to, like board wipes. We want to be able to prevent that. We do have quite a few extra combats or extra turn spells in here. We've got all the budget options that we can afford in this deck to make it under $100. If you do have more of those in your personal collection, definitely add them. We only opted for the cheaper versions, the more budget-friendly options in this deck. We have a lot of ways of generating treasures in Malcolm and also some other cards in this deck, and we want those treasures so that we can play all of our opponent's powerful things off the top of their library, which is a very powerful ability being able to steal those top cards. We'll be able to look at couple of cards each turn whenever we deal damage to our opponents. All right, so let's go over the stats of this deck. So this deck has eight ramp spells, which is a little light, but we do have ways of creating a ton of treasures in this deck. So I didn't include those in the ramp slot. I only included the mana rocks in there. Your pirates are going to be making treasure tokens with Malcolm on the battlefield. So there is a lot of ramp in here. It's just not mana rocks. We've got 10 card draw spells. Some of them are repeatable that you can get a lot of card draw triggers off of. Plus, I didn't include breaches in there. Being able to flip the top card of your opponent's library whenever pirates deal damage is also a form of card draw as well. We've got 18 interaction spells in here. We've got a ton of interaction, lots of ways of dealing with your opponent, which is if you like that kind of style, this is perfect for you. We've got 21 pirates in here. Almost all of them are evasive. There's only a couple that aren't. We've got eight ways of taking an extra turn or combat, and then we've got 35 lands in this deck. If you're looking for singles, sealed product, or accessories, check out our affiliate link at tcgplayer.com. It doesn't cost you anything, but it does help out our channel quite a bit if you use our affiliate link, and we really appreciate it. Another way you can support us is directly on patreon.com slash There, you'll find different tiers that you can sign up for and different rewards that you'll get at each tier. We can't do this show without our patrons, and we really appreciate the support. This show is sponsored by Dragon Shield. If you're looking for sleeves, binders, play mats, or accessories, check out dragonshield.com. If you use our affiliate link, it'll help support the show. First up, we're gonna go over the mana rocks that we have in this deck. We do have eight mana rocks in here. We did opt to go only with mana rocks that have two converted mana cost or less. We wanna get these down early so we can power out our commanders as quickly as possible so we can start accruing value, make treasure tokens, and also get cards to play off the top of our opponent's libraries as well. So first up, we've got Springleaf Drum. You can tap it and an untapped creature you control to add one mana of any color. Soul Ring taps to add two, and then Mind Stone taps to add one. And we've got Arcane Signet, Is It Signet, and Talisman of Creativity. These are all going to add an extra mana to your mana pool. Then we've got Felwar Stone and then Prismatic Lens. Next up, let's talk about some of the card draw spells that we have in this deck. So first up, we've got Ponder, Preordain, and Brainstorm. These are all great ways of digging for cards off the top of your library and selecting the best card. These don't actually draw you extra cards, but they do can trip and help you dig deeper to find those cards that you're looking for. Next up, we've got Charter Course. You can draw two cards, then you discard a card unless you attack with the creature this turn. This card's great because we will be attacking with a lot of creatures in this deck. So this will be a draw two with all the combat that we'll be doing with our pirates throughout the game. Then we've got Windfall and Wheel of Misfortune. Both of these are wheels that are great with another card that we have in this deck, which we'll go over in a little bit. But this is a great way if you dump your hand, since we have a lot of little pirates in our deck that cost one or two converted mana cost, you can use this to fill your hand back up and get some more powerful spells into your hand. And then because we will be attacking a lot in this deck, we have a lot of evasive pirates, ones with flying ones that are unblockable. We do have three ways of drawing cards whenever we deal damage to our opponents. We've got Biden of Thassa, Reconnaissance Mission, and Coastal Piracy. These all say whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. I and mean, these are all great inclusions in this deck. You can draw a ton of cards with these in here. 
Next up, let's talk about all the interaction that we have in this deck. Now we did opt to go with a strong interaction suite in this deck. We do want to be able to control the game while we're dealing damage to our opponents and getting those cards off the top of their library. We do want to protect our board state as well. We don't want our opponents to wipe the board and we want to make sure that our extra turn spells and extra combats go through when we cast them. So that's why we went with so much interaction in this deck. So first up, we've got our counter spell suite. We've got Dispel, Miscast, and Spell pierce these are all powerful they only cost one converted mana cost to play but they do have some downsides to them then we've got counter spell negate and delay these have a little bit less of a downside than the first three but they do cost that one extra mana to cast to counter spells and then we got a couple more we've got arcane denial narset's reversal and then lookout's dispersal which is a pirate tribal counter spell which i love it does cost a little bit extra on the surface but if you control a pirate it costs one less and then last but not least least for counter spells we also included misdirection i like this one because it's a free counter spell you do have to exile a blue card from your hand with so many card draw engines in this deck when we attack our opponents we can draw cards i did feel like the downside to this is very minimal and then last but not least we have two other counter spells we have pyroblast and red elemental blast these are great counter spells for countering your opponent's counters or you can also kill blue permanents which in commander there's a lot of players that play blue so these almost are never going to be dead cards in your deck. Next up, we'll go over some of the single target removal. First up, we've got Lightning Bolt, Chain of Vapor, and Pongify. You may be asking yourself, Lightning Bolt, why is that in a commander deck? You usually don't see that in there. Lightning Bolt deals with a lot of things. You can deal with your opponent's mana dorks. There's a lot of creatures that are powerful in commander that can be killed by a Lightning Bolt. So one mana to remove a creature off the board is powerful enough, in my opinion, to include in this deck. And then we've got a Braid, which can help you deal with either a creature or an artifact and then fiery cannonade is our sweeper that we decide to go with in this deck it deals two damage to each non-pirate creature sweepers are very bad against us in general so having a sweeper that is one-sided that won't affect us because we're playing pirates is powerful enough to include and the card that's very powerful with these two wheels is narset parter of veils she's a planeswalker that says each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn and then she's got a minus two look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. She's so powerful because when you go to wheel, your opponents will only be able to draw one card off that wheel instead of drawing a full seven, making it a one-sided wheel, which can pretty much end the game for your opponents. Next up, we're going to go over the extra turn spells that we include in this deck. Now, extra turn spells are very good in this deck because we do want to be able to continue attacking with our pirates multiple times times so that we can play our opponent's spells off the top of their library. It's also good with Malcolm too because we can get those treasure tokens that can keep fueling us playing cards off the top of our opponent's libraries. So we've got Part the Water Veil, Karn's Temporal Sundering. Both of these are six mana take an extra turn spells. Karn's Temporal Sundering, you do have to make sure that your commander is on the battlefield or else you can't cast this. Temporal Mastery is a seven converted mana cost extra turn spell, but you can miracle it for two mana if it's the first card you draw, you can reveal it and then miracle it for two to get that extra turn. Then we've got Beacon of Tomorrows. This is a repeatable extra turn spell. You take an extra turn, then you shuffle it into your opponent's library. This is similar to Nexus of Fate, except it costs a little bit more. Now, if you do have Nexus of Fate or some of the other extra turn spells, they're definitely worth including in this deck. Maybe take out a little bit of the interaction or a couple of the pirates probably aren't needed with the extra, extra turn spells in here. And then since we're going for a budget and we can't afford the more expensive extra turn spells we did include a couple of extra combat spells that were cheap enough to include so we've got relentless assault untap all creatures that attack this turn and then you get to an additional combat phase fury of the horde does the exact same thing except you can exile two red cards instead of paying its mana cost which can make that more powerful if you have the right composition in your hand you can play that for free Thank you so much for watching our video today. If you like this video and you want to see more budget commander content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can also check us out on patreon.com slash budget EDH. There's a bunch of different tiers and ways to interact with us outside of YouTube. We'll see you guys next time.